All right, hey, what's up? So this is Neil from masterpaintingnow.com. And I'm gonna tell you guys a story of how I got my first art job. And I'm gonna give you some tips and stuff that will help you get your first art job because that's what I'm here for. And hey, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments because I'm here to help you succeed. So let's get started. So the first thing is um, I was in San Jose, California and I was working a job doing, uh, well, first off, I needed to find a job that was gonna allow me to still try to go to school to be, to be an artist because I thought that's what was needed. I thought, hey, you need to go to school to be an artist, right? No, wrong, you'll see why in a second. Maybe not a second, but you'll see why in the story. So I, I got a job that was early in the morning. I wake up really early in the morning, get, get, out, get out early enough to where I can hit the um, class at the evening time. I could also have done it the other way around, do like a night job and then try to hit the class in the morning time, but I didn't want to do that. So this is how I did it. And so I went ahead and I did that. I was working a job making about $13 an hour, which was really good in the 90s. This was, I think, 1999. So I'm 44 now. I think I was like, um, I think I was 20 years old at the time. Sorry about the dog you hear them in the background every now and again. There's some things that are happening around the house that might be making them bark. All right, so then I went ahead and I had this job and I was making like $13 an hour living in a, living in a hotel with my cousin. Each of us were paying like $500 a month to share this um, room. It was like really one room, but it was fine because it was good enough to sleep in and we spent most of our time outside anyway, not at home. And I would skateboard to the bus station, which would then take me to the train which took me to work. And I would do that same thing to get back to the train, to a different train to go to school. Then I would take that to get back home. <laughs> so like most of my time was spent working and then school. Now I did just a regular like school where it's like a regular college, not a university. I didn't have to take any extra classes. All I had to do was take art classes and then I would get a diploma or a, a graduating certificate just for that thing. So. I was going to school and I already knew Photoshop. I taught myself Photoshop. I think it was Photoshop 3. Um, I can't remember how I got a copy of it. Somehow I got a copy of it. Maybe my, I think maybe my friend had a copy of it and he bootlegged me a copy. And I was learning Photoshop and I, I didn't even have my own computer at the time. I was mainly using his computer, but then I eventually was able to get a computer. I saved up and got myself a little cheapo computer. And then I was learning Photoshop and I, I went through all the help files and I taught myself Photoshop, do this, learn the software that's necessary um, anyway. So I went ahead and I learned Photoshop well. I learned Illustrator okay. I wasn't super good at Illustrator, but I knew it enough to where I can use it and make stuff with it, make, make logos, make you know business cards, whatever. I didn't like it as much though. I, I liked more the idea of just like drawing stuff more raw and like especially digital painting. But anyway, so I kept, I practiced that. And I worked on it all the time. My digital painting got better and better and better. Um, if you need to know how to digital paint, go to my Udemy course. So masterpaintingnow.com and I have an Udemy course on digital painting. You can use that knowledge to, to paint digitally in any software. It's like general knowledge that you need to know and any software is capable of doing it. Right, so um, that was a big, big help for me. And then I was in class and interesting enough, uh, a lot of people didn't know Photoshop. So I found myself helping the teacher uh, teach the teach Photoshop to students. So I was like helping them learn Photoshop and stuff like that while I was also taking the class. And we learned things like um, color design, color theory, uh, layout design, font type, font design, things like that that you need to know for graphic design and stuff. And one day he came up to me, he's like, hey, why are you still here? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know why he's asking me this question, right? So I'm just, I don't know how to answer it. I'm like, what is he at? Is he saying I sucker? I don't get it. And so I'm like, well, I, I, I want to get my diploma or whatever. And, you know, I want to graduate. And he's like, no, nah, man, look it. You can go get a job right now. He's like, your portfolio is already so good. Just finish your portfolio. Here's some stuff you want to add to it. Go get a job right now. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, trust me, go get a job. And then he won't have to come here anymore. And I was like, okay. And so I worked hard on my portfolio. I just, I just started busting butt every day. I spent all my time in class just working on my portfolio. And the things in your portfolio are important, right? So it depends on the kind of job you're going for. In this case, I was gonna go for a, just a graphic design job because it's an easy entry level job to doing artwork for a living. And you can like work your way up to other things. 
and I knew that I was going to try to go for like a smaller business, not like a big corporation or something. So just find those smaller businesses. I worked hard on my portfolio. I make sure to add stuff that's relevant to the job you're trying to go for, but also add some other stuff that might not be as relevant, but shows your artistic talent because that helps a lot. And so to guarantee this is what you want in your portfolio. Also, you want all the other stuff that's important for the job you're going for, but definitely add this stuff to your portfolio. Add a portrait in there, at least one good portrait. Now, if you suck at portraits, obviously don't put that in there because like we don't want why, right? If you're not good at it, you have to at least be decent at it. Like at least be good enough at it to where it can be used, you know, in 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 something. Um, do something cartoonish, right? Some maybe a couple cartoon characters, something like that. Have a page full of cool cartoon characters that are interacting with each other, that are um, doing really cool active movements, like throwing a baseball, catching a baseball, getting tackled, like to show you have that knowledge of how bodies and grabbing all that kind of stuff works. If you don't have that knowledge, don't include this. Do a, a page of a couple hands and feet, just one page that has a couple hands and feet in it from different angles and stuff. And maybe a couple a page with a couple full body, just regular full body shots, you know? And you want some, uh, you want at least a page of, actually I'd probably do a couple pages of this because you kind of want to show a whole page for it a page of an interior design of like kitchen or something where you have all the perspective, you drew all the kitchen out. It doesn't have to be colored, just a nice, you know, you could color if you want to, but just a nice, you know, black and white crisp drawing. That's a technical drawing where you show your technical ability of per perspective and have some really cool stuff in there. Like, you know, you want, all, you, you want it to be plain, you know, maybe try to model off a real kitchen where you have like the refrigerator, you have the cabinets, that's cool, but also have cool little gadgets like, a coffee maker on the calendar top, things like this. Um, and then you want some outdoor thing, do like an outdoor scene with some trees and buildings where you can show that kind of technical ability as well. And yeah, so that's like stuff you just mandatory. You just want that in there. If you can do it, put it in there. Maybe do some really cool experimental stuff with perspective, not something simple, just boxes, you know, I make it cool to look at it. People want to look at it and they think that's cool. I like that. And then add all the cool stuff in there that is good for your job. So I had stuff like that in my portfolio, and then I added all the other stuff. So you've never done a job before, right? So you need to just make up companies. Either make up a company to design the um, the logo and the slogan, all that kind of stuff, or find some small company, like a local company, and make something better for them. And you could even go present it to that company, be like, hey, I did this for my portfolio, but I thought you might like it. And they might be like, oh, wow, I really dig this a lot. And they're willing to give you a couple bucks for it, you know? Anyway, you already did all the work anyway for your portfolio. So if they're willing to give you some money, that's cool. Uh, so then um, that's what I did. So I went ahead and I, and I made up some company names and I designed some cool logos, right? Um, go out of the way to do something different. Show your expertise in logos here if you have it. Like show your artistic talent here, right? Um, don't just do something as simple as just like text, right? Anyone can do that. Well, not anyone, but it's, it's not hard to do. So show a cool design element within your logo, right? Well, I think back then we called it the bug. And this is the picture part of the logo. So for Adobe Photoshop, it's that A. You know, for a McDonald's, it's that the arches, you know, that the, the golden arches. Think about what it what is going to be something that that when they see it, you can kind of like it's unique enough to where it's like, oh, that belongs to the company. Now, it might not it might not immediately pair to the company. There's a lot of logos right now that you see Twitter, for example, you see a bird. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, birds tweet. That kind of makes sense. But you might not immediately recognize what that company's about. Right. If you just saw that that logo and you never knew what that company was about. And one day you just see that logo. You're not going to know that it's about typing short little pieces of text and sharing text online. Like you're not going to have that idea because the logo doesn't express that. It doesn't have to express exactly what the company is about, but it has to stand out and be like, if you see it once and, and, then, and then go a month and see it again, you'll remember it. You want it to stand out like that. So be unique enough to where and easy to read. So when you see it, you go, oh yeah, I know that. And you can, you can see it again. Um, so anyway, yeah, so make sure obviously to study art and stuff like you don't have to go to school, but make sure you take a lot of online courses. So you learn all this kind of stuff that's important, like the type font setting and spacing and 
and the general layout design, all this kind of knowledge is good to have. You need to have that knowledge. You can't skip on that, but you can skip going to school, but you need to have all that knowledge to build a good portfolio. And so I did a lot of study on my own, just, you know, um, at the library, because online was just getting kind of started. There wasn't a whole bunch of stuff online to learn yet. And so I went to a local library and I read books upon books and got everything I could about art and learning different kinds of art. Uh, one of the things that helped me tremendously is actually sculpting. Like I helped my drawing so much and so much so that I'm making an entire course on how to sculpt human figure anatomy. So cause that just helps tremendously on drawing, but also it's good for sculpting too. So either way you can use it for both things, but it's yeah, huge. I can't believe how much sculpting helped drawing from imagination. It just helps so much. Um, anyway, so I, already, I had a lot of knowledge in my head, right? So that's important to have. I don't want to make it sound like I was a dummy and just got a job because that's not what happens. But I already knew most everything that he was teaching me in school because I already self-taught. I was self-taught already. So I'm like, a lot of this stuff I already know because I, I read this in books and stuff. But um, he did teach me some stuff I didn't know yet. But you can learn all this online now. Like you don't have to go to school to learn all this stuff. Anyways, to build a good portfolio. And so then I, I had a bunch of cool logo ideas in there. Um, some that stood out that were different. Um, make sure really push the boundaries there. Try to try to offer something that really stands out. That's like, boom, I, I like that. It's simple, but it's readable and I can understand it. Don't go extravagant. Don't go too crazy. You might have one in there that's kind of cool and crazy for like a tattoo shop or something. A logo for a tattoo shop can be pretty elaborate. Um, anyway, to show, off, to show off your artistic talents. And make sure you have a good layouts in there. If you're going for a graphic design job, you have to show good layouts. So I had a couple um, full on... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, full branding of a company, right? So I had this made up company and I had a full branding for it. So I had their logo by itself, the little bug, whatever you want to call that part. This is like the design element. Then I had the cool font and I had the slogan. And then I had their business cards that had a, had a color scheme that balanced across the entire thing. Um, so their letterhead, their uh, brochure, their um, all, all the stuff that was important back then in the 90s. I don't know how much of this stuff is important today for businesses, but all that was included as, as a branding, a full branding, like their, uh, a TV commercial piece, whatever they needed is all there and everything matched across. And then I did a cool brochure layout of the company, what it stood for. Um, I also did like a travel agency and made up a travel agency and I did a cool logo for the travel agency, um, did, did the letterhead, all that kind of stuff and had this color scheme that just kind of went across the board for the entire company so that everything matched and looked cool together. And um, then I did a, cool, a really cool brochure where I had all the pictures of where you can go visit, you know, like bah Bahamas, all that kind of stuff, and cool little graphics and stuff next to the pictures or on the pictures even. And it was just a really cool professional layout. A couple gradient slides, things like that. Just look at some of the brochures and stuff if that's still even something that's done today, make online type, but most of it's probably like an online type page that shows, but be able to design all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, designed the graphics for like a good website and whatever. And I had a couple of those in there as well. And then I went to um, to the job. So here's what I did is I went to my local phone book. Yeah, we used to have a phone book back in the day, this big fat yellow, yellow pages where the pages were actually yellow and you would open it up. <laughs> yeah, book, physical, and you'd open it up and you'd have to go and, and search alphabetical order for different kinds of companies that were in your area. And it wasn't as easy as just like looking on your phone and be like, hey, phone, find me like graphic design places. So that's what I did. I put in the hard work and I found all my local businesses that were graphic design companies. And I marked off all the ones that were um, big, big corporations. So I wanted the ones that were smaller, only had a small little team. And so it'd be easier to get a job working for one of these companies. And I found, I think um, I just went, I went, um, I got the addresses and then I took the train and my skateboard and I just started going. I think I might have, I might have had a bike. I can't remember if it was my bike or skateboard at this time. I think it was a skateboard though. But anyway, I just kind of rode around to these different companies. And I think there was one that had a for hiring sign out front. And I was like, I'm going to go in here. And it was called Vision Graphics in San Jose, California. And Ray Vargas, I think it was his name, was the guy that owned it. And I just walked in there and Ray was already there. So I didn't even have to ask for him. So important. Any job you're going to get, go to the physical place. Don't go online and, and, and apply. Go to the physical place. Ask for the hiring manager, the person that has the power to hire. If they don't know what that is, who's the person that has the power to hire me right now? Who can hire me right now? And that's who you want to talk to. 
and that person's not there, say, what time will they be there? They ask you to leave a, 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 a leave, leave your resume, say, no, I want to talk to it. I want to hand it to myself and uh, you know, be nice about it. I want to hand them it myself. I'll come back. So, you know, what time will they be here? Come back when they're there and, and hand it to them personally. Like, hey, I just wanted to give you this personally. And here's why you should hire me for the job, because I am a fast learner. I'm a hard worker. I'm going to obey. I'm going to listen to rules. I'm going to I'm going to obey everything. I'm going to stay overtime if that's necessary. I'm not going to complain. You know, I, you know whatever. What all your strengths is what you're going to like sell yourself. Right. So that's what I did. I walked right into there with that with that kind of confidence. I'm like, hey, man, here's what I can do for your company. Right. I'm a hard worker. I will stay after hours if I need to. I can answer the phones. You know, I can talk to customers. I have sales experience, so I can sell our packages. I can, I can upsell them if they're just coming in to look at to get a logo. I can upsell them and say, hey, well, why not also get a letterhead or whatever? Like I can do that for you. And he's like, cool, cool. And he, he wasn't that interested yet. And I'm like, here's my portfolio, and I opened it for him. I didn't just hand it to him. I opened it so he can already start seeing what's in there. It's a physical portfolio. Opened it. I'm like, hey, check this out. This is what I. This is what I. What I do. I can do like logos like this and I flip the page for him. I could do brochures like this. I flipped the page for him. Right. And, and, then, and then he started doing himself. He started looking through it because at first he just didn't care. Um, and I, I just kept pushing it. I kept selling myself. Right. Like, look at man, I can do all this. If you need extra work, I can do cars. And I flipped to a car I drew. Um, and actually, I ended up drawing a really cool logo designed for a T-shirt for a company when I worked there. This big diesel truck. And it was like took a long time to draw. I did it in Illustrator. It was really cool. And I showed him some Illustrator work. I'm like, dude, I know Photoshop. I know Illustrator. I know my way around. A, I noticed he had a Macintosh. I know my way around a Macintosh. I can work here. Uh, I can do all this stuff, you know. And I don't. I, I, you don't have to pay me a lot of money. I'm willing to start out, at, at, you know, low, and, and I'll work my way up. I'll prove myself. And he, the, his eyes started kind of lighting up. But what, here's what got him. He flipped to a page that had that portfolio or had the um, a. Uh, portrait I did of this little girl. Now, how I got that job was going door to door. I literally just went and knocked on doors and said, is there any kind of stuff you might need, like a logo? I can do art. Um, and, I, and I was like, I also do portraits. I can do a portrait for like 50 bucks. And I, and I had some portraits I've done of like famous people like Madonna and stuff like that. And so this lady was like, I like that. Can you do my daughter? And I was like, yeah, I can do your daughter. And so I did a portrait of her daughter. And it happened to be that they were related to the million dollar man. That was kind of interesting. For those that remember the Million Dollar Man and WWF back in the day, now WWE. Anyway, so um, that was cool. And he saw that and his eyes opened up. I knew at that point, I knew I got the job. I knew I had the job. Like I just I just saw it in his face. I'm like, I got the job. And he goes, you know what? I really like this a lot. He goes, you have a lot of talent. That's what blew, that's what blew his mind is the fact that because a lot of artists can't do that. So if you have that kind of strength, have that in your portfolio. If you're really good at backgrounds, you're just super good at perspective, have that in your portfolio. It's going to stand out when they see it. My strength was drawing people, especially portraits, drawing things I could see and look at. I was just always been good at that. Anyway, so um, I also had a couple tattoo designs in there. But anyway, so um, yeah, he looked, he flipped a couple other things like, oh, this is really good, really good. He goes, man, I really like your portrait work, though. There's like two portraits in there. He's like, I really like this. He goes, you're a really good artist and um, you're competent and everything else. Like you can do, you can do all the, the grunt work. I can see that. Like you can do logos and stuff. And so boom, I got the job. And that's how I got my first art job. All right. So what can you do though? How can this story help you in today's world? Get an art job. Well, there's still big demand for, for artists. And for something like graphic design, 3D work isn't, nearly as important, but 3D work is becoming important in a lot of different areas. So you definitely want to learn 3D, uh, at least be somewhat competent in the software and how to work, use it to your advantage and stuff. But here's what you need to do today. First thing you need to do, have job experience in general. If you don't have zero job experience, then don't go try to get an art job. Don't make that your first job that you're trying to get. That's going to be very difficult to do. I already had job experience, so go get job experience. Now, if you don't want to do something like McDonald's or whatever, that's cool. I didn't either. As a matter of fact, I've never worked at a fast food place ever. My first job, real job, um, not my first art job. This is my first art job. My first real job, if I remember correctly, was working at a Buffalo Gap in Colorado. I started off as a dishwasher, 
and I worked my way up to being a busboy. That's what I wanted to do, but they're like, hey, um, this is your first job, blah, blah, blah. So I, I bust my butt doing dishes, and then I just started busting tables when I saw that stuff needed to be done. I just started busting the table. Like I learned how to do it. I saw, I, I watched other people do it. I'm like, that doesn't look that hard. And I just grabbed the thing and I just started doing it, right? When, when it was downtime, I had all my dishes done. And they were like, hey, that's not your job. I'm like, I know, but I just want to show that I know how to do this. This is what I want to do. I don't want to do dishes any, forever. You know, I want to do that. And, and that's how I ended up working up to busboy. And I no longer had to do dishes anymore. They hired somebody else to do dishes. So that was awesome. But anyway, so um, just show that show that initiative. Um, and then another one of my other first jobs that anyone can do this, like anyone can get this job, trust me. They're, they're a fast turnover weight in sales. And sales is so important for any job in the future or for just in life in general. Like I highly recommend doing a sales job just to get that experience because they're going to train you how to sell and all that kind of stuff. Um, I did curb, Kirby vacuums, so I think they're still around. Um, Cutco knives, I did that. I did some things selling jewelry. But Kirby Vacuum has a really good in-house training, and they're going to train you on all kinds of cool stuff that's going to just be helpful for everything in life. Just trust me and do it. It's worth the time. Even if you only work for like, you do the training, I think it's like a week or two weeks, and you just go work for a couple days, that's fine. Just do it for two, three weeks, and you're going to learn all this stuff you need to know that's going to be so useful in the world and get yourself a job, all kind of stuff. But you might turn, you might find you like it. Um, they expect a high turnover rate, so I wouldn't worry about it. It doesn't really matter for your job history. The fact that you did it for a little while is good enough. Anyway, so you can get those. Another kind of job you can get for your first job that shouldn't be too difficult is any kind of telemarketer job where you just, you're just doing phone sales, sales over the phone. You might be able to get a job doing bill collection. I've actually done that too, but I already had some experience doing sales before that. And that was really helpful getting that job. And so they might not hire someone that has no job experience at all to do bill collecting. But if you go do something like Kirby Vacuums first, you can probably get your next second job. You can probably do, do bill collecting. Bill collecting was kind of cool because the phone just dials for you. You just sit there and wait for the phone to dial and someone answers. And you're just like, you just run through the spiel of why they should pay their bills and what bills they owe. And all the stuff, all the information pops up on your screen. It's probably different now. It's probably better than it was back then. Um, so that's the first thing. Get a job, get some experience doing work. I highly recommend getting some sales experience and then build a portfolio. And you can start building a portfolio now, but build a portfolio. Now to build a portfolio, that means you have to learn. So start taking art courses online, take some of my art courses on Udemy, like take my anatomy 2.0 course, take my fundamentals of drawing anything course. Those are absolutely necessary. Those two courses, absolutely take those courses, get them on sale. But, but learn other things, learn graphic design type, you know, font setting, all that kind of stuff. Maybe take a course on graphic design. I don't have one of those yet. I probably should make one. Um, but yeah, get all this knowledge you need to build a good portfolio and, and just start working on your portfolio, get it, get it built, you know, look online for what a good portfolio is look like and things like that. And learn how to sell yourself, sell yourself, build confidence, go into places yourself to hand off your, you know, to talk to the manager yourself, to hand them your, even for a normal job, like a, um, Let's say you want to go bus tables, go into the job and hand the hiring manager your resume personally and sell yourself. Let them know what you can offer. Like, look at, I'm a hard worker. I'm a fast learner. Um, whatever's truthful. If you're not a fast learner, don't say it. Uh, I'm a fast learner. So that's what I say. Let them know that you're willing to bust your butt. You're willing to stay overtime. You're willing to learn. You're, you'll, you'll listen to instructions and you'll get things done right. And uh, yeah, so really just sell yourself and yeah. That's it. So those are those are the main things you need. Get those things done and go get your first art job. If you have any questions, leave questions below and I will do my best to answer them. I'm here to help you succeed. So, yeah, ask away. Don't be shy. Ask any questions you want about, you know, that relates to art and getting a job. So, all right. I'll see you next time.